Catherine has always been the receptor of bad press about her morals. <laughs> this is really unjust when you consider the squads, the armies, the battalions that marched over the counterpane of Empress Elizabeth. <laughs> no, Catherine was really very careful about her lovers. Yes, she had about 13, we know. But, and she was, you know, Catherine was rather Victorian in her morality. Her court and her family were conducted with very strict moral codes. She didn't allow French postcards <gasps> and or naughty stories or anything lascivious going on and no bare bosoms. Uh, she fired John Paul Jones from her navy for noodling one of her ladies in waiting. <laughs> oh yeah, she was very, and her family had to follow this. But after all, Catherine was the emperor, empress I should say. Catherine was the empress of Russia. She did not have to abide by any law. She was above it. This is one of the nice things about being an imperial, I think. Well, most of her lovers had to pass a screen test. If she saw somebody that she found irresistible and he looked like he would not resist, she turned him over to the court physician to make sure that he was clean. She did not want anybody in bed with her with a venereal disease. Eminently sensible. And if he passed the medical, he was placed in the uh, hands of the Secret Service to make sure he wasn't a subversive, a bomb thrower, or some lunatic getting in bed with her to kill her. Well, what's the matter with that? And if he passed those two tests, then she placed him in the hands of her provers to women on whom she relied to see to it that he was up to all her romantic <laughs> expectations. Well, the one thing she didn't want was disappointment. There isn't a woman in this room who wouldn't do the same damn thing <laughs> given the opportunity. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, if he passed these congeniality tests, why then she appeared the next day with him on her arm and the court knew she'd taken a new lover. <laughs>